Hi guys, welcome to the video. Welcome to this little beastie here. And this is the Gazelle by Polychops and we're flying it in DCS. Now what I intend to do with the Gazelle is basically a mini series. Uh, I've got about an hour's worth of practice on this thing and it's got a reputation for being a little bit flighty, a little bit skittish uh, and uh, quite sensitive to the controls, which I think probably puts uh, quite a few people off and it did me when I first flew it. However, there's uh, some good advice out there on the, the YouTubes of the world uh, in terms of setting this thing up, which is, uh, for me, I think that's half the battle. So I'll link to, uh, to a video in the description regards to uh, where you can get uh, control settings from a real-world uh, Kiowa pilot. Uh, I've got a, 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 an absolute fascination and love with the Gazelle. Likewise, I love this livery, this Royal Navy livery. Uh, the Royal Navy operated them. Uh, they've sadly gone out of service now, but they operated them for basic flying training for pilots and it was 705 squadron down at cold rose and if you uh, see the fin at the back the tail you can see that it's got charlie uniform which is the uh, mark of the cold rose and then beneath it it's got a shark and the shark is representative of the fact that this aircraft was used uh, by the navy gazelle display team as the black shark so what we're going to do in this video is we're going to um, have a look at starting it up and we'll have a look at some of the panel and some of the elements in relation to the panel and that's uh that's then going to lead us into episode two, for want a better way of putting it, where we're actually going to start looking at the hovering. So let's have a look inside. So I've obviously got track IR on. Uh, it does make a difference in terms of having the ability to look around quickly when you're hovering. Um, one of the videos I'm aiming to make is the difference between trying to hover this in VR and the try trying to hover this in uh, track IR. The reason being is that track IR isn't always uh, accurate in terms of uh, linear movement so for example uh, you know if I turn my head 15 degrees to the right I look almost uh, 180 degrees so for me that uh, in helicopters it's not so bad in fixed wing but in helicopters I've found that uh, it's slightly harder to do it uh, in this than it is uh, VR so I've got about 15 minutes in VR and it was uh, it was actually slightly better because you get both depth perception but also there's a direct relationship between your where your head's pointing and uh, what you're seeing which in some respects makes it slightly different because you haven't got this uh, offset. So let's have a look at the panel, uh, have a look at what we're going to be playing with today. Uh, let's stabilise VR there. Okay, so it's a fairly uh, straightforward panel. The first thing I'll mention is I've got a mod on it because the uh, add-on has French text for the instrumentation. Uh, there is a mod on the DCS forums to change it to English text, which is what I've done. However, what I would say is a relatively straightforward, relatively simple helicopter. So once you learn where the switches are, the language is largely irrelevant. So looking at the instrument panel, it's fairly classic in terms of its layout. We've got uh, an attitude indicator here, standby attitude here, and then we've got the vertical speed, which is metric. We've got the speed, uh, as in airspace, speed in kilometres an hour, again metric. Then we've got our altitude down here, direction indicator slash HSI slash compass here. And then we've got this new one for helicopters. Uh, those unfamiliar with helicopters, uh, this is a torque meter or a torque gauge. And basically what it's doing is sensing the amount of torque that's going through the transmission to work out how hard or, or how much uh, is being demanded of the engine and the rotor system and uh, I'm not entirely sure as to the the mechanics of how this is but uh, as I say I didn't fly these as a pilot so my intimate knowledge of the workings uh, is not uh, that great. Down here we've got a rad alt uh, which as you can see it's a logarithmic scale uh, so the first 50 feet is actually taken up about a sixth of the, the dial and then it progressively diminishes to the point where this 50 foot here you can see is taken up about 12th it's taken up about half the space. Now switch gear is fairly straightforward the only things we need to worry about at the moment we've got the lighting panel here we've got the engine fuel and electrical systems here we've got the switches that relate to that here we've got the services uh, such as pito hydraulic test etc here however one of the things to be aware of is that uh, the master arm is over here which seems slightly odd but i guess it means it's within the pilot's reach and the pilot's control and then down here we've got the engine uh, gauges and switches and then finally here we've got the stability augmentation system now we'll mention at this point there's a difference between this here which is the magnetic brake and this here which is the trim and i'll highlight that 
during the tutorial uh, when you do the uh, tutorial for it it will get you to turn on the trim and it will also get you to turn on the magnetic brake but when you read the instructions it says use just the just the trim if you don't have force feedback feedback if you do have force feedback then you can use the magnetic brake now my understanding is that basically trim is just as you'd get on any other aircraft uh, you know you can blip it left right forwards and back and it will uh, it will change uh, if you like the neutral position of the controls magnetic brake is basically as far as I understand it is basically uh, a system whereby um, when you move the controls into a position so you move it a little bit to the left uh, what happens is the magnetic brake holds it there um, so in effect what what you've got is the ability to position a joystick take a hand off it and as far as I understand it it holds it in that position now that's great for some respects in real life uh, what happens is in order to move it the amount of force or the amount of pressure on the stick is detected uh, as opposed to the um, movement of the stick and therefore that force if you like is a breakthrough force which allows you then as long as you're using more force to reset where that uh, magnetic brake fixes or holds the stick so let's say for example I'm holding it and I move it two inches to the left when I let go the magnetic brake applies and holds it two inches to the left now that's my understanding of it if you know any better correct me but the problem it has within DCS is it means you have to displace your sit stick a certain amount a certain percentage before it will allow the aircraft to respond to your stick input so what that does is that in increases uh, a lag and puts in an artificial dead zone in effect which means that if you s you move your stick slightly it, it, it won't register it, it won't respond to it so that's why uh, that's for force feedback users but not people who don't have force feedback uh, that's how I read it in the instructions anyway and then as I say down here you've got uh, your stopwatch and your engine gauge likewise uh, your stability augmentation system not all gazelle helicopters have this um, certainly I know of a few civilian ones that don't have this but trust me it's going to be a very nice addition to this aircraft now for all flights I'll put down the control indicator down here to demonstrate what I'm doing and at this point I think I need to mention uh, the control settings so let me just call this up okay so let's go to axes this is all we're really concerned about at the moment now in terms of the axes uh, let's go to uh, joystick Y for the worst I say joystick it's actually cyclic Y and go to axis tune now normally when you uh, load up the sim and you have a new aircraft and you haven't done anything to it uh, you'll find that that is set to 100% and you'll find it like that so you've got no dead zone and then you've got this 45 degree angle no curvature now whilst that's great because it gives you uh, the maximum deflection for that control so the maximum deflection of my joystick results in the maximum deflection of the control that does cause a problem where you've got a very sensitive helicopter because small movements around here result in large movements of the uh, aircraft controls and if we've got a hypersensitive aircraft such as this that doesn't really help as much uh, basically it makes hovering that, but that bit more uh, challenging so you've got a couple of ways that you can deal with it and uh, I know that people commonly do something like a curve uh, and basically what this means is uh, as you're close to the center point your control deflection uh, is relatively large for the amount that you move in terms of your vertical deflection you can see in fact it's for the first bit it's actually not even having any effect but as then you get towards the end of it it has a disproportionately large effect where a small amount has a large change in the flight model so really this isn't ideal because what we want really is linear control so let me get rid of that if I can there we go and one of the things that was recommended was rather than doing that was to reduce the saturation and what you can see now is we've got a linear uh, control movement um, but what happens is if I go fully back you can see that we've got a proportional movement to the stick it's directly proportional but actually what it's done is it's limited the maximum that we can uh, have and what that means is that for fully forwards or fully aft action of the stick it's only actually providing 40% uh, or it's only uh, moving the aircraft controls by 40% if it's 40 so in effect what we've done is we've reduced the severity of the control we've made it uh, much less sensitive but retained the linear nature of the control 
and enough sensitivity that we can hover. See, if you look at this, I can, I can move the stick so that I can just about keep it within that little black square, which is uh, great. So for the pitch, the recommended off the, the video was 40%. Um, I've gone with that because uh, at the end of the day, that, that uh, video uh, is far better in terms of explaining it. For roll, I've got 30%. I always do this. Uh, axis tune, 30%, no, 25%. And trust me, that's all you need. Uh, you really don't need 100% control authority with this helicopter. In terms of the collective, again, there's the problem is you've got to be careful that you still want... So, for example, if you have your collective and you're trying to land, if you limit this too much, you, you can't land. Um, but you do want to have it a slightly more gradual than uh, its initial quite aggressive attack profile. Uh, so, let's get rid of that. And then the rudders, same sort of thing. Um, uh, axis tune. You can see we're down to 70 for the rudders, 70% control authority. If you reduce it too much, then basically what happens uh, is you won't have enough authority over the rudder uh, to cope with the torque from the engine and rotor blade system. So finally, you get to the fuel flow lever. Now the fuel flow lever uh, is different. It's more of an engine control uh, than a flight control. And as a result of that, uh, I'd suggest no dead zone, 100%, 100%, and no curvature, because you will see that in action as we start up the helicopter. So that's all that. And so we've gone through the panel, we've gone through the control setup. Uh, what we need to do now is have a go at starting her. So uh, let's get the track IR off. Let's recenter it, make sure we're all good to go. Doom. Right. First thing I'm going to do is this massive red lever that is slap bang in the middle of your your view if you look left and blocks your view that's your rotor brake i'm going to take that off because if i do that first i can't forget it later on now in terms of the engine this thing's really easy to start uh, you put battery alternator generator fuel pump so four switches then you have to wait 20 seconds what i do when i'm waiting those 20 seconds is i erect the artificial horizon so just press and hold that switch and then when it settles down you can let go and the standby so this is awkward you need to press and hold and then use the mouse wheel to move the waterline mark down to the horizon by now you've pretty much generally got 20 seconds gone so what you can then do is unlock your track IR again and then you can go here and you can click up on the start and what you'll see down here is the engine gauge and this is a combined engine and rotor gauge the large needle is your engine the small needle is your rotor rpm and initially this will come up to about uh, 25,000 rpm but your rotors won't uh, won't turn there's insufficient gas flow from the engine uh, to make the rotors turn through the free power turbine uh, so that's all up and running what we can do now is we've got the rotor brake off at this point we can introduce our or increase our fuel flow lever and you'll see our engine starts to increase in RPM and then when we get to just literally just before 30 what happens is the rotors will start to turn and you'll see not only do you get the shadows of the rotors turning and the external visibility of it happening you can also see it on here and we'll just once you get it to this point here, thir just under 30, just to where the rotors are turning, there's no need to advance it any further. That will, on its own, be enough to bring the rotors fully up to speed. And what you need to do is wait till the, the needles are matched. And uh, when I say needles matched, overlying each other, not necessarily the same numbers because you can see they don't line up. So at this point, they're overlying e overlapping each other, so you can gradually bring in the fuel through the fuel flow levers or lever I should say that yellow lever in the roof and this is why I like to have that one on an axis is so I can monitor engine instruments whilst increasing it and eventually we'll get to the point where the needles point roughly where this white mark is and there we go we're all started so that's us up and running 
Just zoom out a bit. Zoom back in. At this point we could turn a few things on so we can turn the lights on for example. And we will turn those up. Put that to normal. Put that on. You see the console lights then uh, lit up. In terms of down here we've got the pitot heat amongst a couple of other switches um, but the odd one here is the master arm switch is sort of amongst these services which is a bit weird. Here's the trim which I mentioned. Finally what we're going to do is go down here and turn on the stability augmentation system. And there we go that's one uh, gazelle pretty much started. Not going to touch the weapon systems at the moment that's uh, going to come in later episodes uh, but that's pretty much where we're at. Now as I say, I'm going to leave this uh, down in the bottom left for all the flights and uh, I've had an hour so we'll see if we can uh, just at least get ourselves off the ground. I know that I can trim slightly right and I need to bring in right pedal as I take off and this is where you've got to be very sensitive with the controls. We're going too high and we can bring ourselves back and what you need to try and avoid doing is once you get a collective level, you're just really tweaking it. Uh, otherwise you end up doing push-ups where you go too little, too much and you start doing this up and down motion. What you also need to be aware of is the impact that the collective has on the other controls. Uh, what we'll do is we'll go through that in more detail in th the next video um, which hopefully I'll manage to get done within the, the week or so uh, but then once we've got that done we can uh, start to have a look at messing around with it uh, a little bit more ruggedly and see how we get on so uh, i hope you enjoyed the video if you do don't forget to tick like share or subscribe and uh, i will see you in the next video says he desperately trying to land without any side slip oh come on there we go we're down so guys look forward to seeing you in the next uh, next episode and take care